Hey, Fitzy here, back at the game another one. I got that custom tail panel that I made installed on the back of the 49 Fleet line. I just simply done the top side with the cotton butt and the bottom side with plug welds. I'm going to show you how I did it here now, so stick around. So here's where we are, okay? You saw me turn around and welding all this up on the inside, and then you saw me turn around and grinding it lightly, uh, and then basically flipping it over and grinding off the welds on the outside or where it was actually the weld pass, pass through it. Uh, prepped both that and this panel here, got them ready, and then I actually applied a rust paint to it. Uh, why is it this color? Because uh, it was on sale, okay? Uh, I don't get carried away with high dollar um, paints and primers and everything for doing this type of stuff. I got to weld this up even more. Up along here has got to be welded. Along here has got to be welded. Uh, it's, it's very hard to actually do an old car and not have uh, like bare metal or welding on the inside of a panel. Uh, a lot of people get worked up over it, uh, wondering how we're going to stop it the whole nine yards. The problem we're running into is that like um, years ago, you never had all this protection cars were built and restored and kept for a long time the key to keeping rust from coming back is not to drive the car and keep it in a dry place okay uh, what i mean by not driving the car is basically in bad weather 
Uh, if you're building a car and you're going to drive it all year round, chances are it's probably going to rust. You're going to have to oil the dead out of it inside and basically uh, keep it from rusting. Um, <clears throat> most cars that are kept in dry climates don't rust. A lot of the 60s cars, uh, especially Fords, uh, the cars were assembled on the assembly line. And then basically what they were done is the whole car was painted, okay? When you take a door skin off an old Ford or any old car, it's bare metal all around the edges, all in around here, inside the roof, uh, in behind the fenders, all that. A lot of them were the same, dodges. It wasn't until into the 70s that they actually got in to start painting everything. Um, you can go down to Arizona and down south and you can get them cars and they're mint and they're perfect and they're rust free. Uh, northern climates they rusted out a lot of times it's because they were left out in the weather if you take a a 60s car and put it in a dry basement in uh, newfoundland and leave it there for 25 years it's going to be perfect when someone comes to take it out because it's dry moisture is the killer moisture gets trapped in these areas and it just sits there and it forms rust because that's how it works with the steel a car rusts from the inside out a lot of people are hung up on how do you get painted behind, how do you get painted behind. What are you using this vehicle for? Are you driving it year-round? If you're driving it year-round, store it inside and uh, wash it and clean it. If you know, if you live up here like myself, you will find that um, a lot of vehicles, once the snow hits, there's nothing done with them. They're driven, parked in the driveway, driven, and parked in the driveway. So for six months, they're not even cleaned, okay? And that's how you see real heavy rust, construction cars, taxi cabs, all that type of stuff. Nobody really looks after them. It's very hard to look after them. Uh, there's guys up here that I know that got vehicles they drive in the winter and they keep them oiled. Every fall of the year, they oil up the vehicles. Uh, they've had them cars for a long time because they oil them up. It's a messy racket. It's dirty, uh, but the cars remain rust-free, okay? So do not get hung up on all these little nooks and crannies and stuff like that if you're restoring an old car, okay? It'd be nice if you could take it when it's all welded up and dip it in something. Fine. But, you know, as you're going along, paint it like this here. Don't get carried away with it. You can spend a lot of money on all this paint. I can put uh, pour 15 in here now and have all that done. And be, oh, yeah, that's all done with pour 15. Then come up here and weld it along here and all the pour 15 is burned off. Okay? Uh, weld through primers are the same way. If you put weld through primer on all that and you start welding through here, you're going to be burning so much of the weld through primer. And uh, the problem with it is, is that you still see it on the edges and um, i've always had a problem using well through primers because uh you don't get good penetration uh you get bubble gum wells the wells are not strong and that type of stuff and i've always had problems with it so i don't use it i prefer to do it this way this car when it's done will be kept in a dry environment and uh, i can guarantee you it won't be driven on a rainy day for that matter right so you know that's just i just want to talk about that for a bit because i seem to get a lot of questions and you know how do you get paint in there and you know uh, why don't you do it this way and why don't you do it this way and epoxy it and sandblast it and do all this type of stuff uh, all that stuff costs money to anybody to do okay uh, do it as, as best you can with what you got and basically uh, you, uh, you know it'll last for a very long time that is just my take on the whole thing. Uh, different guys have different takes on it. Some guys figures it's got to be done one way, one way only, and that's it. But uh, a lot of us can't afford that, and a lot of materials uh, are expensive. Up here, uh, we find them a lot more expensive than, uh, what you call it? I've used Pour 15 in the past. Uh, it works pretty good. Uh, if you use it on something that you're going to drive in the winter, it's going to eventually rust anyway. Uh, it's there's no product out there that's going to stop rust from uh, metal from rusting uh, if, if it's left out in the weather and you know it takes a beating and stuff like that it's going to you know take chips and all that type of stuff and then it's going to rust it's just one of those things so just you know look at uh, protecting it as good as you can painting it I'm doing this here for the simple fact that I want to drown the actual wells get paint down around the wells to keep them protected that's the way I do it this way. I like using spray bombs, cheap spray bombs. Like I use a full can on the back of this here, that big can. I just went to hell with it. It runs in that everywhere. I don't mind about it because I want lots of paint on it, right? Uh, just a good quality rust paint. That's all I've ever used. I've never had no issues with it. 
uh, you know, with you know, cars down the road it was only this past weekend. I was out looking at a car that I restored, uh, I think um, back in 2012. And the car looks the same as what it did when I left my shop. So, you know, it's something to be said about looking after the vehicle when it's done. If you're restoring a car, welding pieces in it and all that type of stuff, uh, there's going to be places on the car where you're going to have bare metal on the back side of it. Don't get so hung up on it. If you're keeping this car for a long time and you're keeping it in a dry environment, you will be fine. It's only when you actually take the car and you put snow tires on it and you drive it for winter and don't look after it that you're going to start running into problems. Anyway, I'm rambling on way too long. I'm going to get this panel and get it mounted in place now and start marking out and everything, getting everything ready and start getting that welded in place. Because I want to get that welded on because I want to get started on these quarter panels. All I got done there now is I got holes punched in it with the hole punch tool to basically so I can spot well. But I left all the mounting holes uh, that are on it. So I basically still can mount it in the holes that I got there. And what I'll do is then I'll weld all these up and I'll remove the clicos after and weld them up. So that's basically all I'm going to do there is have that all set up there. So that there when I put that up in place then I haven't got to worry about it. The rest of it is going to be all done cut and butt. Now next thing I got to figure out is up here on this top side. Now what I got done here is I know where my Clico's got to go here and here and what I'm doing I got it marked off for straight edge I do this because it's a lot easier to do with the grinder you can sit down and want to and try to cut this out of the car and do a butt on this here it's a bit tricky you can use a saw or something to cut it around the corner stuff like that I just find it takes up too much time people don't like corners okay on wells and I've never had issues with them because uh, they usually have issues with doing too much welding in this area here and you know they look at this here as this corner ends here and then this corner ends here so they'll come along here and they'll weld here and they'll start the welds here and go on again and they got too much heat in this area here uh, I find just treat the corner as a straight line so basically if I weld there I come down to here and weld like this here and I just weld it on through it I don't turn around and weld on either side of the corner Usually a 45 is a major problem. Fellas will come up and then they'll start welding straight across. And they'll basically come up here and they'll weld. And then they'll come across here and start welding. And then they'll wonder why this corner worked. Because they got too much heat in this corner. So I do it this way just so I can actually use the big grinder to cut it. Okay. To uh, basically get a nice cotton butt. And it just makes now over here there's a big slight curvature to this here. That's fine because my big grinder can fit it. But this edge here is going to be an issue for me. So I got it done like this so I can come straight across here, cut up through here, and cut up through here. And it's nice and simple and easy, and I can control the overlap, right? I'll go ahead and I'll get them trimmed up. So I've got it all put back to the Clecos where it was to before and down underneath the bottom side of it, it's all Clecoed in place. Now in big jobs like this, you've got a lot of shapes going on out here on this side here and on both sides. Uh, do not, and I repeat, do not take a project like this and start from this side and start welling across this way because you're going to end up with a mess as you get over to the other side. Things are going to change here and where this side here is opened, 
we got room here to manipulate stuff. You can't manipulate nothing here in the middle. So what we're going to end up doing is starting here in the middle and working our way out to the outside. And basically then start cutting this here to fit and then manipulating this quarter panel to fit that light section along there and out the outer edge. Now I do have an issue here. Um, I'm not going to be concerned about it right yet. When I, the boat quarter panel's got a different height. This one here got a real high spot right here uh, for some reason. Uh, well, it's where I cut this down and made this here the right shape. So this height here and that height over there is the same. If you didn't, if you don't know what I'm talking about, the last video I made this fit this panel, I realized that one quarter panel is different than the other. This one here has more of a slope coming up on it, over exaggerating it than the other side do. And this side here, as you can see, has a real nice flow to it, going up along the back side of it there. But when you stand over here and look at this one, this one kind of goes up, kicks, and then goes back again that way. And I'm not uh, too fussy on that, so I'll fix this after, because I'm going to cut this section out and roll this down and get this to flow nicer here. But uh, I can go ahead and I can weld all this in place for now, so I can be ready to go. So what I'm going to do here now... Is I'm just going to I'm going to tack this in place, but I'm only going to tack from here to here. I'm not going to weld nothing up here. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to basically start here in the middle and work my way to the outside here and work my way to the outside here and just overlap it and tack it. And then I'm going to start here and do the cotton butt along here and cut the section out here and do the cut section out of here and get this section here welded in place. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not going to worry about that right yet. As long as I get this section here straightened away, we're good. So I'll go ahead now and get that tack welded in place. Here's all I got done. That's overlapped here now, and I tack welded along. You saw me going from one side to the other because I wanted to get a nice tight fit here. Uh, I always prefer to weld my panels together uh, in an overlap fashion before I do the cotton butt because if you just clamp all this stuff, it got a tendency to move around a lot and it slides down and everything. I want that in the position that it wants to stay, and the only thing I got to do is move it inwards, right? So, what I'll do here now is I'll start here in the middle and I'll start making cuts. And I'll cut and I'll set it all up so this here goes flush and I'll basically do the cotton button through here and uh, just start working my way again outside so then that there is all done. stop here because I want to show you. You saw me cutting in the middle and then pushing in with it and uh, spot welding that spot there. So that there went flush right there, okay? So that's nice and flush. Now, when I started to cut away from this here, what's happening, because I pushed down this here, this metal here is wanting to pull inboard. So now if you look, I cut across here, this is flush, look. Okay? So I got to, I can actually do that. Every time I push in on it, it's going to want to fall in more because all this here now is flush. And the only, and it went flush because I had this pushed in here and now the metal is wanting to move inboard. So it starts to follow itself right across. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on and cut this here and uh, get a tack welded in place. Basically, all I'm doing is I'm cutting it. And where I welded it, I'm welding it again. Okay. And I'm only going to tack weld it in place because I got to remove the piece from behind first and uh, basically, or get it broke clear anyway so that I know it's let go before I can continue on. So I'll go ahead and I'll get all this here cut and uh, bottom place.
you see me there cutting and stopping and welding, cutting and stopping and welding, and you're thinking, well, why don't you just go ahead and cut the whole works right out now because you got it welded on. The problem you're going to run into is if you cut this too far, this panel here, the bottom panel you're installing is going to fall past your top section. It's going to be very hard to pull it out. I only cut it and I watch, like right now I'm getting ready and I'm going to start cutting this here. I'm going to keep an eye on This one here is high now. But when I start cutting this across here, this is going to start to fall. So I'm, as I'm cutting this, I'm keeping an eye on this spot here. When I start to see that fall and getting close to where it should be, I stop. Then I turn around and I push in on a small bit and then I weld it to make sure it's flush. And then I, and then I continue on cutting, keeping an eye on the next one, cutting, keeping an eye on the next one. Do it that way because if it falls in, you're going to find it very hard to try to bring everything out. Now I got all them done, and as you can see, it's run my finger over like that there. Look, that's all butt welded there. Now that's all basically butt welded. Okay, ready to be welded. Now I'm not going to do nothing with it right yet because I want to get going on these outer edges. But you can see in here now, I got the this is the inner structure that was right here that's let go. It's still connected here on both sides, so it's not let go, but it's, it is let go from this panel here. So I haven't got to worry about welding. Some fellas have talked to me about. Um, having problems with the back piece sticking. Um, the trick with it is, is just only to put so many welds on it and uh, keep an eye on it as you're going. Uh, if you weld this up too much, if you start running beads with the piece still in there, you're going to weld that piece back on, okay? So just like little tacks, something that's easy to break off, okay? Now that I got this here all pushed over here, you can see right here, there's a, it's starting to fight me right here. There's a bit of a high spot here. It's going. I'm going to haul these cleat goes out of here now and put a pair of voice grips up here so I can actually let the pressure this to push this this way so that it'll relax it and it'll go and everything go this way. That's the advantage of doing it this way here. If you start from out here and start welding across here, when you get into this section here, you've got nowhere to go, okay, except up, okay. You'll have a big kink in it. At least this way here, this type of stuff here, I'll chase that right across the panel and right out over the edge. Now I'm going to repeat the same process here. I'm going to cut it up along here, a few tacks, cut it up along here, a few tacks, and work my way out here. I'm not going to tack weld this section on because I want the metal to move. As I bring this up here, this metal is going to want to move. And if I tack weld these corners here and along here, all this is going to want to move. So I'll just clamp a pair of voice grips on it here just to hold it in place. I won't have it too tight or anything. I'll just give enough for the metal axe so the metal can actually move and I'll start making the cuts up along here and work my way along, along here. Once, do I get to, once I get to about right here, I should be fine because all this out here where all this is let go, I can shape all this to fit the quarter panel.
What's happening here is because I caught it, the panel's wanting to move up as well. So now I cut it, the actual panels are still overlapped because the seam is that tight. So I gotta cut it again to try to relieve it to get two of them together. Now I work my way across there, flush them out as you're going, and right here, it's very hard to see, but that is extremely high there. Uh, I got the tuck that was over here, I got it pushed all the way over to here now, so all I'll do is I'll just cut this section here now, and I'll basically manipulate this here to fit this panel here, and I'll start from up here and start working my way around to fit this to this panel here. So what I've done is I chased the, the, the roll in the metal, that like if you had to start from the middle I chased it all the way over to here and now I'm gonna push it off the end here so I'll just go ahead and I'll end up cutting this piece right out here now right down through here and eliminating it all together and I'll start working this metal just by pulling the panel back and forth to fit this panel here I'm gonna have to show you on the other side I never had the camera on I basically cut this off here and weld this up here as you can look it looks good up along there now okay way it flows along the back side of the car way it flows along there Okay, all that here is going good. So I got this side done. This is all done now, and everything's let go on the back side. There's sections there. This is the part of the panel is still hooked up on the other side. And just another piece there, just pulled off. Uh, another small section there. And is there another one out here? Nope. Cut that off. That's down there on the floor here. So I got that side done and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to repeat the same process over there. So over on this side now I got everything else done up along there and now all I got to do is do what I done on the other side that I never showed you. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'll set it all up here and make sure the camera's on and I'm going to show you what I does here to uh, manipulate. All I'm going to do is just chop that clean right off and you're going to see the way it falls away and is way out of whack and then I'll start up here and I'll start working my way down piecing together. You're on? Yes, you're on. <laughs> Now you can see what's after happening here. Everything's gone out of whack here now. All I'm going to do is I'm going to start up here and I'll start flush mounting here. I'll put a tack here, tack here, tack here. I'm not going to worry about getting that fit perfect down there yet. 
I'm gonna make it perfect up here, then the next inch, then the next inch, then the next inch, till it gets down to this section down here. So you see me there, all I did is I pulled it across. That fits pretty good along there. It's got a small bit of a low spot here. I'll dolly that after the fact. Uh, it's just because of the two transitions between the two panels, because this panel shapes this way and this one's this way. But before I actually solid weld it up, I'll dolly this here section a bit better to get a nicer flow. This one over here came out a lot nicer, right? And uh, the way that one flowed there, that one came out better. But you're gonna run into that when you're at this. But I got everything's cut, and there's everything let go. Everything's let go in there. Uh, that big section is where. That's the section that was right here. Okay, that went along there like so. That's all cut out there now. That piece is gone. So now everything is bought welded in place. Okay, it's a pretty simple process. Uh, I have always found it a lot better. Try to fit this panel to butt weld this panel in place using the little uh, clamping things. I got them there somewhere. Up here in my arsenal of stuff I don't use. These things here. They're uh, conversation pieces, one thing else. You see these things here? I don't use them. Uh, just, you know, I got them with a bunch of stuff one time and I still got them. I just never uses them. So, you know, you try to do this panel that way, you got a lot of work ahead of you, okay? Fellas talk about, you know, it's better to cut it, trim it, and fit it, and all that type of stuff. The problem you got is you got to come over this way here, and then you got to work your way up. Now, the panel turns this way, and then it kind of flows up and goes over. So, you got to get all this flow right. And it's very hard to work when all this here is alive, okay? So, when you're starting here, I got all this here straightened away, so all that's done. So, all I had to work with is making this section here fit. And I worked from here on the way out because I got this section gone. So I can work on that. So, you know, it's basically a simple process. Uh, to me, there's very little that I find that it don't work on, okay? Uh, people are concerned sometimes with panels from behind. Uh, there's only a few places on a car that's like that, rocker panels, some sections in a roof. Uh, usually, it, I'll cut, I'll mix the boat of it. I'll cut a section of it so it cuts the fit. And then I'll have an overlap in a spot where I get at it. So that way I got something to lay against and I'll cut it out after the fact. But like these straight corners here uh, is never an issue for me. It's a lot easier for me to do it this way and to get a nice tight fit than it is to try to roll this around this turn here and try to get it all cut right nice. You could probably take a, uh, a saw blade of some sort and do in there or a little tiny uh, grinding wheel. But I just find it just takes up too much time. And this here is a lot faster just making the, the straight cuts along there. And when all that's done and grind it and flushed, uh, you won't even know that it's there. So, but I'm going to go ahead now, and all I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start tack welding this in place. I'm going to tack weld it in between each one, get it about an inch apart, and then I'm going to start from one side and start tack welding across, cooling it as I go, and work my way back and forth from one end to the other. Because I figure by the time I gets over to there, this side here should be cooled off enough that I can start over again, go on across there. So. Let's get this welded in there. I'm not having welded the bottom in yet. Uh, I like to finish and dress the top first. If there's any issues that I run into, I can just chop it off and take the panel off the car again. If you it goes down here now and starts spout welding this bottom section on, because that's all this is spot welded on, and you run into problems welding all this, uh, it's very hard to remove it. So I'll finish all this up here, grind it done, so I said, okay, I'm happy with that. Then I'll go down to the bottom and I'll weld all the bottom in.
I showed you there my welding there. Uh, my welder, I have it set up. I like to turn the welder up as high as I can get it so that I can get lots of heat into each spot weld, okay? Now, if I was to run a bead, I would burn that away, okay? That'll just start blowing holes. You can hear it building up heat, and then it just gets to a point where it's like, okay, time to stop there. Um, like, you got to try to get good penetration in these here, and you got to play around with your heat settings and, and raise your heat settings up so you can actually put a nice hot spot weld in it. If you're turning around and setting your welder up to do this type of work and spot welding like this here, uh, and you're running beads on this type of metal, if you can run a bead on an edge of this metal here, it's not hot enough, okay? If you start to run a bead and you burns the edge off it, then okay, you're in the heat. But the beginning of the weld, there's good penetration, and then it just builds up so much heat that it just won't, it'll actually melt everything away. That's the point that you got to get it so you can get good penetration on this here. There's no good in just trying to tack it and have the weld on top of the two pieces. You got to try to get the heat to transfer right through the other side. So as you can see, all I've been doing there is like putting a, a weld next to a weld, weld next to a weld, work my way along. I'm going to let that cool off there now that's still a bit warm. And then basically turn around and work my way around it. I got some issues up here. I don't like the way this is going and the way this is fitting here. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this section and leave this alone up here. I'm going to cut a section out of here because if you look at this here, this is a left joint. And they got to grind it away to nothing. So I'm going to take a strip and cut out of here. And basically put a new strip in there because it's high here. And like I talked before, the problem I got is this quarter panel over here, right here, is a lot higher here than this side over here. Like if you look at that and you can see the way that flows right nice there. I got a nice flow. This one here don't. This one here got this buck on it. It's kind of hard to see there because cheering and everything's in the way. You can really see it over this way. Look at it this way. Here you go. You can see the way that just comes over. It goes boop, boop. Right? So I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to cut a strip out of here because it's pretty thin up along here. This is an actual lap seam and it used to be leather from the factory and someone just welded it all up and they really grinded it thin. Over here it's really, really bad. Okay, Over here the sections you can see here, they actually grind through it, see? So I'm just going to cut a strip out down through here and get this the shape that I want it and weld it in. I'll work that stuff later on. I just want to finish off this upper quarter from basically the trunk lid back. So I got it all welded up. A couple of spots it was thin where the corners were grinded thin and I had uh, some spots to fill in there. Uh, but that's to be expected every now and again. But down here where I had all fresh metal, uh, went along really well. Got lots of heat into it, lots of penetration. Right. Came out really well. And again up here, I had some thin metal on this edge here. Because this car had a lot of work done on it before and it's grinding. And up around here I'm having the same issues too. I left that alone because I'm cutting the section out. And then I continued on down through here and got that done. So I got it all welded up. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back. I'm going to go grind all that off, dress it all up, get it all ready. Finish this much of it off so I'm happy with it. And all that's done, then I'm going to go down and start uh, getting the bottom ready. So here it is, grind it off for the first time, okay? You see up along here, I still got some issues and everything going on here. I've had to dolly in a bit and stuff like that. A couple of low spots, I'm gonna work them out. Same with over here, and I gotta deal with this section here, but I'm gonna cut a strip out of here, fix that. Over here, it was much the same type of thing. Just had to dolly it a bit, I got a spot here, and a spot up along here, that's low, but I want to cut that out, right? So, you know, and working, like, you know, I had to work this little section here, it's coming out pretty good though, all the same. But all along here, and there's pretty good all the way along through there. Very little warpage along there. Jesus, there's no warpage there. That can't be a money. No, it's good there. Yeah. So all I'm going to do now is I go back, and if you look closely, you'll probably see a scattered spot like this, or a scattered pinhole right here. I'll go back and I'll touch all them up now. I'll come up here, there's a hole here. I'll weld that up. I'll tidy this up a bit more, weld up across here. Get this all dressed up. Same without on this end here. Weld this up, just leave that alone for now, because I'm going to cut that out. Same one, I'm going over here. You can see I've got to tidy up this corner a bit more. 
I got to uh, weld that up. And you can see here it had to be welded. All I'm going to do is just weld it again. That's all I'm going to do. Don't ever be concerned about it. If you're going to blow through it, um, you'll know since you strikes it with a welder. Um, you know, if you can run a good bead on it, you're still doing good. Okay. You can see me the way I was growing and I was knocking the heads off it. And then when I got down close enough, I came to this metal here and grind it up to it. Okay. And that's what I did then because that's one of the advantages of running with 18 gauge metal is that you got room to move. Okay. You might want 20 gauge, whatever, but, but grinding this down, running up into this, you can see I only grinded this much of it here. A lot of it was just ran over when I got it smooth. But working from here to here, um, you got room on this one here to grind because we already grinded that earlier where we made this piece, right? And I just worked my way up to it, right? But I knocked the head down first. Don't go grind the whole area all the same all along. Just knock the head off the, the weld, bring it down as low as you can, and then grind it off. So I went back and I went ahead and welded up everything that I thought, like little holes and imperfections that I didn't like. Right? Up along here, welded that up again, or dolly that up and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to grind all that back and finish that off. So I got it all grind off again. I'm happy with that there now. Leave it there or it's too. Come up, transition through here and around the back. And uh, basically what I'm going to do here now, if that's all ready to go, uh, all I got to be done is the bottom side got to be uh, plug welded down the bottom. But before it gets into that, I want to address this problem up top here. Okay, I went ahead and I grinded back so far here. And you can actually see it's cracked over here and stuff like that. There's an actual overlap seam here and they just welded it. And they grinded it off and it's really bad. So I want to put a strip down through it. But here's the problem we got, okay? You run this. Here's a lead seam that runs across here. So that's a factory join on these bodies, okay? You can see it there after digging into some lead. I cleaned it all up here and got it all ready to go. Uh, you can see that I can basically just fit my finger underneath the tape here. Look, out on this outer edge, okay? When you come over here. See, I got over half an inch, and that's because this section here is too high, okay? This here is the same height on both sides, okay, this section of the car here. But when you stand back and look at it, this way here, and look across it, you actually see that it's higher on this side. Look. I got it on the same location by the lid, okay? And it's just out here on this outer edge. This upper section here is higher up here. So when you're looking across it this way, you can actually see there's a large, like, Boom. It's almost like a really sharp transition there, right? But when you come over here, look at this side. This side got a real nice flow to it. See? It's got a nice flow to it. The way it flows up and over the top. So I'm going to try to get that side over there looking like this side here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a couple little strips and I'm going to put them in through here. This one here is still a bit high right here on this side, but this side here got to be replaced because it's just cut so thin along here. And I'm just going to lay a piece right over the top of this. And I'm going to and I'm going to lay a piece right over the top of this, and I'm going to do the cotton butt right into it and remove that section I need. I'm probably going to end up doing all this, but I'm not going to get into this today because it's bad up here too. I'll have to do the same thing. I'm just going to concentrate on down here first, getting up the back, because you can be all over this car when it gets into it. But I'd like to have this transition looking good because where I got this panel now installed in the car, I want it to look good on both sides. So I'll go get a couple of strips now and start figuring out them. The other side over here. I'm going to have to cut this first and dolly this and get this to where I'm happy with it. And then I'll cut a strip out of it. So I'm going to work on this one first. I'm just going to cut a split down through it and start dollying the two panels to lay them down. And see if I can get this panel to come down. Well, I'm into it. I ended up cutting a section out of here because uh, it was too sharp on the top edge of it. And then I start bringing it all down. I had to split it here again. Uh, it just seemed like everything wants to fold over itself and I had to keep it rolling nice. And But you can see how much... This has uh, dropped down. You can see the overlap there, look. And then two pieces of metal. It's a fair bit of overlap because that pushes down there. That there was actually caught straight, and I never done anything with it other than just bring it down. So it's a fine bit of overlap there. So what I'm going to do, I got this down here pretty close where I want it. I'm going to make up strip down. I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to start from here and work my way back up across the panel. I'm going to make a piece up here that I can overlap here, and I'm just going to cut and butt right into that there. Um, just a flat piece. I might put a small crown on it. I don't know yet because it's pretty It's just the transition rolls over the top side here. So and uh, That way I can get it and then I'll get this section done And then I'll start building it back from there and work my way back to panel instead of uh, going at it Because I'm going to cut this piece of lead out of it. It's an overlap piece And it's like when I push this down you can see that overlaps there You can see the cut and just comes up and overlaps it. That's how much I had to 
overlap at all and that there is just a nuisance to try to work with and I and if, even if I melt it out there's going to be a step and everything there and I just put it soon put a strip across there so okay I'm going to go ahead and make up all this here and get all this piece here straight away so I got this little piece here tacked in there and I went and grinded it off I only got it tacked in there I haven't got it fully welded in place yet but I turned around and played I just used the flat piece and I, I brought it over here and I tack welded it along this side here and then I started to shape it to bring it over to the shape and then I ran tape across from that section to this section here and I got the same distance here which is good and then when you look at it from the side here it's got a nice profile going on up through the car and you can actually see this is where it originally was look this is resting there and you can see how much that was off going up through there now this is a lead section here uh, what I'm going to do I'm going to go back up to here and I'll cut this out of it all together I'm not fooling around with that I'm trying to clean that up I'm just going to basically put a sleeve right across there and to replace that and then I'm going to trim this up here and then I'm going to uh, trim this up so I can lay this down and get this to fit where I want I might just weld that in place there again because it seems like it's good solid metal there and uh, just work on this section down here I might just take a whole strip and put right across here just so it's not two or three pieces well together so I'm going to go ahead now and start fitting up this upper section here and getting this fitting right cutting that out of my way so I can actually get it to lay down and then basically uh, go from there so here's all I got done, okay? All I did is I turned around and I overlapped this up here, okay? And basically I pushed down it, tack weld it in place to where I thought it was good, and then I checked everything. And then I done the cut, brought down through here, and cut the piece out of there, and then made that flush. There's the little sliver down there on the floor there that I cut out of it. And uh, so now I went and turned around and I measured them all up. This side, this side, oops, I went and, uh, Fool that up there as quick as that. There we go. So then I turn around, I made the measurements there. They looks good. Over here looks good. They're pretty close. I'm happy with that. Okay. So all I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna go over here now and I'm gonna weld this up. And then I'm gonna put a little small piece in there and I'm gonna make a strip to go in here and finish that up and just do the cutting butt into that there and weld a piece into there and have that done. So I'm going to go ahead now and get all it done. So there you have it. I'll weld it up and grind it off. Okay, I got this little hole and this big hole to fill in now because that's where the lead seam was. So I cut that out and removed that. And this is a little spot here. I wasn't going to get in cutting a big piece out to fix, fix that. So I'm going to put a little small piece in there. I'm going to do that pretty simple now. All I did is I went and found an old scrap steel and I'll move it across until it's in a good location. And then I'll cut it off and I'll just start Tack well on this side, trim it off, tap it in place, and weld it in. Show you how it does that.
there you have it that's all welded up as simple as that don't get carried away with it basically if you notice when i welded it in the patch was still a little bit low so i just filled it up the center of it with weld it's a lot better to do that than to try to work it all up and then thin the metal out and that's all the way it does it i'm going to go ahead now and uh, cut a piece out and weld it in there and basically get this quarter panel glued up so there it is all welded up all right uh, for some reason i'm finding the factory metal is pretty thin on this car and i find that strange because it's from the 50s right and uh, I, I wonder if a lot of this was grinded off uh prior to and i'm finding that when i get up into sections especially on these higher sections here and i start welding it it starts to burn away this panel here which is very unusual usually you can put a good bit of heat in these and weld them up so but i managed to get through it i got it all done there and you can see now the transition is nice nice transition across there so so that side's done there now so i'm gonna go over here now and do the same thing over here uh look like that piece is laid there is cut out i'm only going to put a piece in up to here i'm not going to get into this up here yet yet, yet i'm going to stay into this lower section so i can get the bottom side welded up and get this panel finished here's the first piece cut out okay i just trimmed this out i'm not going to cut two of them out at the same time because this here just go flimsy i'm trying to retain the shape of it this here is a bit, was a bit high here and i trimmed it off so now i got a piece here so now i need to make a piece on this here now this piece has got a bit of a crown on it this way plus it's got a crown on it this way so like here is the piece over here from factory this is one of the problems you got with them see this is what i had to deal with okay the way it was welded together so all i got done i got a strip cut out that's going to cover it over and i just do it like the cotton butt but i need to put a bit of curvature on that all i'm going to use is the voice okay i'm just going to tap down to this here just put a bit of a crown on it this way here as well as put a crown on it this way just a slight uh, concave and i'll use the opening of the voice to tap it down into it so i'll get the roll just using a simple ball peen hammer You can work that in there now, just tweak that a small smidgen. Lay that in place there. And I'll just basically tap well that in there and then I'll start cutting a button and shape it as I'm going. I'm never concerned about see the way that sticks up there. I'll shape that as I'm going. I got a good fit here and a good fit up on the back side and a good portion of this up here. So I'll go ahead now and I'll tap well this in here and basically have it so that I can actually work the rest of it. And then I'll basically take my time working my way around it, cutting it and fitting it. So this is all I did, I laid it in place and I put a few tacks around it, okay. Now it's sticking up on both sides, you can see it's not a perfect fit. I'm not worried about that. I can actually shape that and then get that back in place there. So I'm gonna go up here now and I'll start cutting this here to fit this panel here and work my way around the panel so that I can actually shape it as I'm going and I'll shape these and bring this section down as I'm going along. Anytime I'm putting a piece in the car, I always use start with the corners. The corners, I can bring a corner down and I can work away from the corners like this here. A lot of people don't like corners. They, they do um, round edges and stuff like that and they cut the fit and they says that is, you know, it's that strong point. And we're talking about an auto, auto body now, not a plane, okay, first off, because that was a, a technique that was used in building in the aviation and doing repairs on aluminum. Uh, in the case of what we're doing here, this is a lot easier to work with. Um, I'll show you one of the problems that people have uh, in a little bit when it comes to corners. People says that it always sticks up or is too low or whatever, and I'll show you where that comes from. So I'm gonna go ahead now, and I'm going to push this down here and put a tack here. I'm not gonna weld this across here because I gotta replace this later. And I'm just gonna start coming down this side here and working my way down here, and then I'll work my way across here, and then I'll start bringing myself back up here to this point here. So then I got it all tack weld in place. And I'll only tack weld it every so often so I can get the piece out from underneath it. So I got this all tack welded together here now, and I come up here, and now this piece here is the next section. If you notice here, I'm having a problem here, this is fighting this here, because when I push down this here, this wants to drop a lot here. So what I'm gonna go ahead now is I'm gonna cut this piece out of here and get rid of it all together, and then make up a piece to go over the top of that and start fitting that in there. I'm gonna fit two of these pieces in place first and get them tacked in place before I weld the whole thing up solid. That way any change has got to be made. It's kind of hard to weld this one in solid now and it's only half done because it's got to be welded across here as well and this piece is in the way. So I went ahead and I cut the section out. Here it is here. Okay. 
Now if you look closely at it, you can see there's a the lead there, and this is the way it was put together from factory, okay? That was a seam that was put across there, and basically it was uh, leaded in between them. That's where the panels were done. Uh, and then when I caught it, it relieved this section here, and this fell down where I wanted to, so this here can be welded on here. I went ahead then, and I cut out a piece, 18 gauge metal. Uh, all this metal, by the way, that I've been putting in this car is 18 gauge. Uh, some of you have uh, asked that in the past, and I keep forgetting to mention it in each video. Um, so I cut this piece out here, not a fit in here. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to fit that in place, dolly that up. Okay, you know. oh, it's this way. Yeah. And I got it left a little bit high because one of the advantages of having a panel left high is that when you push down on it, the panel is going to want to spring back up and that way I haven't got a tendency to fall away from it. If you make this panel so it's got too much of a bow in it and then you try to force it back, when you weld it, it's going to pull away from you and then you're going to have a low spot here. It's better to have the metal high on your panel piece that you're putting in it so when you push down on it, there's resistance on it so when it welds, it's going to want to pull back this way. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead, tack this in place, then I'm going to do the cut and bolt around the outer edge of it and get it all tacked in place. When I get that done, I'll bring you back. So I went ahead and done the cotton bolt and got it all down in place. Now there's some spots here that I'm, I find might be still a bit high and I'm unsure about it. I'm going to show you a little uh, trick here now. So basically you can actually work this panel before you weld it all in. So what I'm going to do here now is grind all these welds right here down. I'm going to grind them all down flush so that I can actually see what I got. I'll hammer and dolly this section then so I'm happy with the fit, fitment. Okay, and then once after that's done, then I can just weld it up. So here's all I did. I went and grinded down the welds so they're all nice and flat and flush. And what I'll do then is, and when you do that, you can actually see the blend going on, okay? You can actually see the welds are blending. But up here, they're not blending, okay? They're not blending because this metal is harder than this metal. So I can dolly this section here flat now, so I can actually get a nice transition here. It's not big, but... It's only small. And you can do the same thing over here on these sides here, right? There's a little spot here that I find that this is lower than this, so I can dolly this up here. Uh, MIG welding is a harder weld. Uh, TIG welding and oxyacetylene is a soft weld. Uh, if you left them welds there, they're very hard to work when, when they're stuck up like that and trying to feel the panel. Like right now, I can run my hand across that and I can actually feel the transition. I can feel if it's low or if it's high or whatnot before I weld everything up, right? So I'll go ahead now and I'll dolly up these sections here. And I'll dolly up everything what, what I like around here and I'll go around and I'll give it a few more tacks all the way around get it ready for um, uh, solid welding it up. I went ahead and I went around and I've tack welded them next to the other welds that were already there or gapped them if there was any big gap there and just welded them in between. So I got it ready now and I can start welding all this up. Now a lot of people talk about corners. Inside corners, outside corners, you should round them off and basically it's, it helps with the heat and all this type of stuff. Yes, that's, that is the issue. Uh, the problem is, is like, I'm going to use this for an example, because this is a hole here now in this here. When you're welding, and you're looking down through that hole there, this is a three-quarter inch hole, usually an inch apart, okay? When you're in a zone like that there, and you weld there, you weld there, okay? But when you get into a corner, okay, you got a tendency to weld there, there, and there. Now, all of them three spot welds are in that zone, Okay? So what I intend to do is down here, you can see I left them here and left them here. I did that one on purpose. Uh, down here, you can see that I left them outside the zone. So now I got one well there, one well there. I'll work my way to the corners, okay? I won't use the corner and weld from there and I come down here, well, 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 well. Because right here in this corner, you're adding a lot of heat. You've got to skip a corner, skip a corner like that there and then come back to it. So when you're working out to it, like I'll weld here next and I'll weld here. And as I'm working to that corner, it'll, it'll be a transition and it won't be a lot of heat in this corner. It's always been an issue that like you'd weld here, you weld here, you weld here, you come back, you'd weld here, you weld here, you weld here. So what you're doing, you're putting a lot of heat in this corner. And what ends up happening is that corner ends up dropping or it ends up rising up. And I've always thought that the process of welding corners, like fellas rounds them off. It's, it's a nice way of doing things. It takes up a lot of time and fitment to try to do this type of work. Uh, you really got to be filing and fitting parts and stuff like that. And I just, I just like cutting everything on a 90 degree angle. And I, I experiment. I, as you can see over here, like I don't have no issues with corners. Okay, there's no corners stuck up or low here going along this section here where I got that all welded up. Because that's how I, I done my heat transfer. Is come when I came across here, I didn't actually weld, weld, weld like that. I put three in that corner. 
I figured I'd point that out because I get a lot of people talking about uh, how to do corners and stuff like that. Uh, the aviation industry uh, in aluminum, it's a must because of it is a stress crack. The vehicle vibrates and it's a plane, okay? Uh, we're talking about automotive, if the, which is going to be filler and basically paint and primers and stuff like that. And, you know, you're not allowed to fill a plane, okay? You can paint and prime a plane, but you can't go filling over uh, flaws in the body of a plane. So that's the reason why corners are done in such a way that they, they uh, it eliminates stress, okay? Because of the type of vehicle it is. So this is all I've ever done. I've never... Played around with rounding off corners. Uh, years ago, I did have problems when I was overlapping panels and welling corners. Corners were always high, and that's the reason why I played around with it till I come up with doing it this way. And I do it this way for some reason. It's faster, okay? If you want to take your time and round out the corners and basically cut it and file it, by all means, do so. Uh, a lot of fellas do it, and there's not a thing wrong with it. Um, I just find that it takes longer to do and basically it's not as easy to do as this here and there you have it all well done grind it up got the nice flow back to it again flows up nice the contours i'll leave that there i'm going to continue on with that when i go to do the quarter panels uh but i got all that done now all is left to this quarter panel or this tail panel section now to well up is this bottom side here now so i'm going to get set up now and we go down and get that all prepped up and welded okay you're seeing me there going with the drill bit uh what i'm doing i'm cleaning out uh the metal that i painted on the back side if you look over here you can see just paint in behind on the panel that i built so I'm cleaning off uh, them using a the drill bit. All I'm using is I got an old drill bit and I cut it off. And when I turn around and I flatten the edge of it off and uh, I'm using that to clean up the paint on the bottom of the, uh, the spot wells that are in the car. All I use this to sharpen this with is I use the bench grinder. But instead of what I did is I put the machine like this forward there, right? All I did is I put it in reverse. And I put it up against a grinding wheel that was spinning, and that's how I sharpened it. I played around with different ways trying to sharpen this, and I think that's the best way I found it because you're cutting away from your cutting edge by going backwards, and it puts a nice little edge on the uh, the drill bit this way, and you cut it nice and flat. So then you can actually use it for just removing the uh, the paint off the from for the spot wells. So I'm gonna go ahead now, get the rest of them cleaned up, and start welding them up. There you have it, all finished. I got them all welded up, all the spot welds. I welded them up right along, all the way to the, over to the other side. And got them all grinded off. Nice and smooth, you don't have to be actually perfect. You can see this little scattered flaw in there, but that's the way spot welds usually come out. Uh, anytime you're building panels and custom panels and you've got an opportunity to put a flange on stuff and do them with plug wells or spot wells like this here, uh, doom is a lot cleaner trying to run a bit like a, a half inch bead or one inch bead on thing It always looks dirty looking. It doesn't look finished. This gives it more of a coach built look and uh, It looks a lot cleaner when it's all said and done and To tell you the truth. I think it's a lot faster uh, Because now you've got no welding to look at on the bottom side of the car You just got two flanges that are welded together. That's it 
So that's pretty well straightforward and simple there. You see me cleaning them up and getting them ready now. You, you know, up on the back here, you can see there's still some work got to be done here. Got to be cleaned up, probably another bead put on them and stuff like that. I'm not worried about that right now. Our whole plan is to get the outer structure done. This car is going to be taken off the chassis. Best to do all this now with a seam sealer. And then I'll put like a box liner or something on it to protect it. Because this car is going to be used. So there you have it. One tail panel installed. All done with spot welds along the bottom. Done the cotton bud up here on the top and all along this section here. Had to replace a bunch of sections up here. Had to recalibrate <laughs> this quarter panel. But uh, as you can see, it's a technique. You can use that almost anywhere. And uh, like when you're doing the cotton bud, like I said before, always start in the middle on a big panel and work your way out. If you start from one end, it gets pretty tangly because you can end up getting like a wrinkle in your metal and you'll never get it out. At least when you start from the middle and work your way to the outside, everything can actually uh, be flowed off the end of the panel. Uh, they never show body work, filler work, on all the shows on TV. They show small portions of it, but it's the longest part of it all and it's the part that nobody wants to see because everybody thinks filler is horrible. Uh, these, this panel here, um, all this work is done to this here, this will need to be filled. Um, it's not that, it's not perfect to the point that it's, you know, all it needs is a coat of primer. No. In order for me to get that to that, I got hundreds of hours of picking and filing to do on all these panels, and I'm not going at it, okay? There's nothing wrong with it. I'm a bodyman by trade, and what I never liked was always the transitions from one metal to another metal. And overlaps and, and corners and stuff like this and I always done this here to try to do it in such a way that I get the least amount of filler on it as possible this here is going to all be filled the whole thing and it'll be just a tight skim just to make it nice and smooth and straight because there, you know, there is waves in this okay there is low spots there is high spots um, I don't do this to a metal finish or and smooth it all out because I'm a bodyman by trade all these cars, 95% of them are filled. Uh, they never show you doing the body work on them uh, because it's just dirty work. Um, it's one of the most neglected part of, uh, of the trade itself because everybody thinks it's a coat of paint. They see metal work and then they see a coat of paint. But the filler work that's underneath it is what makes the coat of paint look good. Your paint job will not look good unless your body work is done good as well. I'll be getting into all that later on other projects. I won't be doing it on this one because this owner here is going to look after himself. He got someone that's going to do all the body work for him. All I'm doing with this car is metal finishing, but I will be getting into filler work and body work. Uh, I dare say it'll be on crusty. If you have asked about the taillights, these are 58 Corvette. They're the ones that are going in it. And this is how the taillight works, okay? That's how the lens works there. The bulb goes in there and it shines out this way. So this is on the car this way here. And you can get at the bulb easy as pie right because you've got access to this panel over here from in here i caught a section out that they had put in it so you've got access here to get at your taillights to get at your bolts you can get all that from here i've, I've always been a firm believer that you got to build stuff take it apart so that's how the taillight goes in it and that's how the lens or the bulb goes in it from the top right there and there you have it Two taillights are in place. You stand back here and look at the transition, the way it flows with the car. Other side, same way. Okay. Flows with the car. Nice little feature. Very hard to make them taillights look right on these cars, I can tell you that. And that's basically what the back tail end is going to look like. We haven't decided yet. The number of asked about license plate holders. We're not quite sure what we're doing with that yet. Um, we put something French in it. We might float it off the back of the car. We don't know yet. Uh, owner hasn't decided. We're going to cross that path when we come to it. Um, it could be in anything. We might even do some sort of electronic license plate that comes up and slides down underneath it. We don't know. Uh, I just don't want to go getting into that right now because a few have asked about it and the one thing when you're building a custom car things change as you go along okay so and like uh, very easy to get to the taillights I can get this open again now and if you can see it in there yep there you go you see how easy it is now to get at the taillight 
change the bulb and whatnot. So we had to do the wiring and whatnot. So. It's a nice transition into the body. From the side, it's got a nice flow with the trunk lid now. As you can see, back of the car got a nice interesting shape to it. Okay. It looks pretty good like that. But I'm pleased with that. Finally, now that we've got somewhere to start with, I'm going to start here now and work my way around the car. Uh, next thing I'm going to be doing with this car now is the two quarter panels and the skirts. And so that'll be in the, the next video on this car. But uh, I'm going to leave this one here. I hope the tips are good. And until next time. What are you doing?